please. Why is Tony always so pleasant? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jack, get up here. I need help. You don't have a portable charger or wire, do you? Just Wait, we got a lot of bodyguards today. Where's the other two? I'll get back there. Okay. We got half of the four night precinct here tonight. Only half? And their leader, the king, the commanding officer. Pleasure. Sit over here, Captain. You don't have an iPhone. Seems nobody wants to show up here. All right, here. No, 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 plug that in here. All right, we ready? Yeah. Let us stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I, oh, over John. here. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing. Uh, let's say a prayer. We got a lot of praying to do today. First of all, for what happened in Florida with those kids. Let's pray for them. Uh, they're all angels. Hopefully, they're in heaven. Okay. Number one. Then we pray. Let's pray for us. First responders and our servicemen serving here and overseas in combat. Let's say a prayer. Thank you. Okay, let's let's be seated. Amen. Uh, we have some people here today. God, I hope this doesn't die on me. <clears throat> look, look. I just want right, uh, this wire. We're going to start off a little different today. I just want this wire. Uh, we have the United States Postal Service here. We have a postal inspector, and I believe we have some people. We have some uh, some people from the branches. Am I wrong? All right. Now, listen. If you get abused, let it let it rub off. What you can do to get unabused is by correcting the situation. The okay. Right. I don't know how many complaints you're gonna get. Well, I'm gonna be one of them. Oh, anyway. a lot. So, uh, we're gonna bring you. Uh, how, how do we want? We have a postal inspector and two grand. We got one zero four six nine and one zero four. Six, 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 seven. Six, six, nine, six, two, six, seven. Six, two here? Yes. Six, two, six, nine. Six, seven. Six, seven. I don't know how we're doing the handle. Uh, I don't have it. We got, what do you mean, that's all? How many do you want? Uh, we want the inspector. Oh, six, oh, gen. that's in Coney Island, is it? No. Oh, <laughs> six, oh? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. The, you, you know, uh, we got complete. You know what? I hate to say all these come here and stand up in front of the mic and we'll direct your, uh, our questions at the appropriate person. And I'm sorry, he, uh, Brenda, I'm sorry about 6 0. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay. okay. All right, Postal Inspector first. He's going he's gonna to give us some uh, info. And if you have questions, I'm going to write your name down so everybody, we do this orderly. All right, so if you have a question. Just raise your hand and I'll write you down, okay? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is John Viola. I'm currently the acting assistant inspector in charge of our New York division. My usual position is team leader of our Bronx Westchester Mail Theft team. So, hence, I'm the supervisor for the squad that covers the entire Bronx. Uh, my team investigates, the postal inspectors investigate over 200 federal statutes regarding the U.S. mail including in those statutes are mail theft and identity theft. I realize the Bronx in the, in the, over the past several years has been experiencing numerous mail theft complaints. Is everyone aware of a collection box phishing? Mm -hmm. no. yes. yes. Phishing is the met means of stealing mail from collection boxes using devices covered in glue, usually rat glue, with strings attached to it that they actually put in the collection box and steal your mail out of it. We've been working very closely with our local law enforcement partners, the NYPD from both the 47 and the uh, 49 precincts in your area to combat this, these crimes. What we've done in particular is do prevention efforts. We There's approximately 850 collection boxes on the streets of the entire Bronx. To date, we've modified over 600 of those boxes. And by doing so, by modifying them, we're actually welding the doors shut and actually putting a slot in the box so that the only person, the only thing you can get in the box is letter-sized mail. 
by restricting the size of the mail, it also restricts the, the actual devices that they're using to steal your mail. So it's a two-fold effect. It actually prevents any dangerous stuff from going in the box, but it also prevents these devices from going in the box to, to steal mail from there. So we anticipate, we have it scheduled to hopefully complete the entire Bronx by the end of March. That's where we're on track for, and that's our goal right now. Like I said, we've, we've worked very closely with the NYPD, our law enforcement partners, and we've arrested hundreds of individuals for mail theft. Um, last year, we had a, a federal takedown of uh, eight gang members uh, relative to the fishing activities. And the biggest thing I want to get across to you tonight is a couple prevent preventative measures. If you take anything away from you tonight, take this. Before you deposit any letter in a collection box, whether it be a modified box or an unmodified box, please look at the, the label on the box. It's a blue and white label that's on the box, and on that label, it has the last collection time for that particular mailbox. Now, if you put your mail in there before that last collection time, that mail will be picked up by that time on the box. If you put it in really? after that collection time, that mail is going to sit in that box all the way until the next day. So say you miss it by one hour. That letter is going to sit in that mailbox for 23 hours before it's collected. Okay. We always tell everybody, if your mail piece is not in that mailbox, it can't be stolen. So it's so important. <laughs> if we could just get everyone to put their mail in the box before that last collection time, there would be no theft because mm -hmm. the perpetrators are committing these crimes overnight. So if they don't have any mail to steal, you can't be a victim of mail theft and identity Great. theft. If you have to mail from a collection, if you can, mail from your work location, mail at the post office, inside the post office in the lobby. That's the best case scenario. But not everybody can do that. So I try to get everyone into the moment of mailing in the morning. Mail on your way to work rather than your way home from work. Because if you mail on your way home from work, chances are you missed that last collection time, and now that letter's going to sit in that box overnight. Um, a couple other things. If you have an apartment-style mailbox at your house where you actually open it and you share a bank of boxes with some extra, do not let your mail accumulate in there. Or even if you have a box on, on your home where the letter carrier delivers to. If mail accumulates in there and you have mail statements containing your credit card information, your banking information, if it sits in those boxes, it's available for perpetrators to steal. It's the same as that you would protect any other property that you own. If you have a vehicle, you're not going to leave the keys in your vehicle. You're not going to leave your vehicle unlocked. So take the same protection that you do that to protect your mail. Um, so that's what we're trying to convey out there. Like I said, at one point, I can't emphasize enough, please make sure you're looking at that last collection time in those boxes before depositing anything in there. I want to open it up to some questions. If anyone may, may I say this here? Uh, you talk about the last, you know, drop. Correct. If you miss it on a Saturday, correct. <laughs> you go, it's not going till Monday. Correct. So if, if, you, if you miss it, I would hold it and then bring it Monday Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. It's not going anywhere anyway. If you deposit that in Saturday afternoon after the last collection time, that piece is going to sit in there until the collection on Monday. So you're just leaving your mail piece out there for up to 47, 48 hours possibly oh. for no reason at all. It's not expediting the process at all. So like you said, if you have to, mail on your way to work on Monday morning, it'll be in there when the collector goes out there, he'll pick it up. You can also hand the mail to your letter carrier. So if you ever see your letter carrier, whether it be at your work location or at your home, you can hand your mail piece to your letter carrier and we'll then we'll bring it back to the office and get it processed. Any questions regarding the thefts of criminal activity? My, my purview is strictly criminal activity. The postal service. Oh, Bobby? Okay. Yeah. Linda? Linda. Um, two weeks ago, I had the unlikely situation of, I live in 10460, Van Buren Street, okay. of having a box dropped off and left outside. I live in a private house. Okay. Somebody's usually always home. No doorbell was rung, nothing. I got the... My, I'm online, so I got the, the paperwork saying that they were going to deliver, waiting for the box. They said it was delivered. Nobody's there. Look outside. There's nothing. Somebody has stolen my merchandise. Okay. Uh, thank God it cost me. It was 60 bucks worth of merchandise. If it had been two weeks before that, it was over $500 worth of merchandise. Um, I called Officer Sturdivant, Detective Sturdivant, 
and I gave him a uh, description of a gentleman that we were watching that same day that had gone up on people's porches. And when he saw us watching us, watching him, he left, but then he came back again. And I called Devoab and spoke to a young lady named Catherine, very nice. She told me she would take care of it, because I said, if, they, if there's nobody answering the bell, don't leave it, leave me a sticker. Okay, fine for the for my regular mail guys that come with the with the little buckets. It's the truck guys. They don't even ring the bell because we watch them. Okay. They come and they just stop it in the middle of the street, jump out, throw it up on the, on the porch or bring it up on the porch and they leave it. The other day they left one on the windowsill. Thank God it wasn't taken. But I caught him as he was leaving and I said to him, why? Oh, I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> I, like I said, that's going to be a delivery issue that the Postal Service is here. They can speak to that as far as why he's leaving parcels unattended at your address. So we'll definitely address that part of it. As far as the theft of your parcel goes, you have a couple ways of reporting it. You can either go online to usps.com. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, there's a link to our website. Mm -hmm. And you can file a mail theft complaint right online. Um, that's the best way of doing because all these complaints get triaged and we actually we monitor them for trends in the area. So we may have a trend developing in that area where maybe a couple of your neighbors reported similar type of criminal activity. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way of doing it. If you can, go on to USPS.com, follow the link to the postal inspectors, then, then follow the link to where it says uh, report an online mail theft complaint. Right. But as far as your delivery issue, when they come up, you can definitely address it with them as far as why is the carrier just leaving the parcel there without attempting delivery on it. Yes, okay. Uh, Marcy? Uh, Mike, Mike. Uh, can you hear me? All right. So we, we do have a lot of problems with boxes being dropped off on the ground, whether it's outside my main door or inside, same issue. They're in a rush. I don't know where people are going. We don't have, a, to, to address to your um, supervisors, they, they know who I am, they're on the phone. Um, the last round was pretty successful. The mail sometimes doesn't come till after 7 p.m. I get home and it's there on the ground. Now, lately, after I spoke to one of the ladies, one of your supervisors, the past few weeks, we're actually getting our mail on Saturday again. We hadn't gotten mail Saturdays for a month. Um, and it's just impossible. Every day, it's a different postal person. We well, don't have the same postman. I'm going to let them come up and address that. Yeah, yeah, Marcy, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Marcy, he's the postal inspector. What you're complaining about is for the branches. Let's yeah. save it for them, yeah, all just, right? Just to clarify, I have nothing to do with delivery. They're not my supervisors. Okay. We're totally separate entities. We're in the law enforcement arm of the postal service. Okay. We have a totally different reporting structure. We're totally separate. We strictly investigate criminal activities, so that's all our purview is. Any delivery. Well, it's criminal when you leave the mail in the yard. It's criminal. And the representatives are here tonight. I, well, one more thing before yeah, you step crime. away. Nothing I sometimes leave for work early in the morning, and at 5 a.m., you do have people looking and lurking through your, both your post office, your boxes on the corners. Yeah. They're there. Well, well, that brings up a great point, and I was just speaking with the commanding officer from the four nights. Very important. If you see suspicious activity, just like the NYPD has been breached for years, you see it, say something. Call, up, call 911, tell them you believe these people may be tampering with the collection box. The yeah. NYPD are out there. They're, they, they're the eyes and ears out there. They're the ones in the community. I have, I have six agents that cover the entire Bronx and 10 northern counties. So there are, there are law enforcement partners. We, we respond to these. If there's an arrest made, well, I have my inspectors respond to them, and then we actually work jointly with these investigations. So we have a great working relationship with them. So if you see anything, please immediately call 911, report it. They'll dispatch a car over to the area and, and immediately respond. Okay, you did? I. No, I have to wait for the oh, Yeah, wait. Okay, great. Okay. Ayahe? Right. And then Bernie? Yeah, confirmed by the end of March you're going to upgrade the mailboxes? Yeah, that's the, that's the schedule right now. Like I said, over the past year, we've deployed over 600 of these boxes throughout <coughs> the Bronx. And um, there's a few zips that are left. Uh, 10469 is one of them. We have about, I think, 40 some odd boxes in that zip. 10462, we've done about a third of those boxes. Um, so these are, we're actually wrapping them all like uh, all up. And like I said, within the, we have them on the schedule to be completed by the end of March. Okay, I understand the point of the last pickup, but I can 
completely disagree with it because the box is there for convenience purposes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you defeat the purpose of the convenience part, then I might as well just go to the post office. So there's got to be another solution. Even mm -hmm. if you upgrade these mailboxes, I heard now people have keys to them, so they can open it. It's no, not so. No, any any key issues in the Bronx have been addressed, so they do not have keys to the boxes. To Thank you, know boxes that. In the Bronx, but that is not an issue that we're working on right now. It's not. That issue has been addressed in the Bronx. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, good evening. Um, that was one of my questions because we've been here at the community board. This issue of mailbox fishing has been an issue for at least four time. years or so. Mm -hmm. So we've been dealing with this as best we can. But the one thing that did alarm me was the fact that there was one master key that for all of the mailboxes. So you're confirming that that no longer is an issue. We've addressed any key issues in the Bronx, so they, those have okay. been addressed. Okay. The other the other thing is is that last year where there was an there was an article that said that because the mailboxes were not being used, they were going to be taken away. <laughs> is that the, and the reason why they're not being used is that people are bringing them to the mailbox because of this issue. We're hoping that that's not going to happen. No. Any any there's a procedure that has to take place that the postal service has to follow that before any mailbox is removed. And they actually measure the amount of mail volume over a several week period. And then from that, they have a criteria which they use to uh, whether or not the box is, is uh, eligible to be removed from, from the location. It's just like any other business. If you have a box that's generating a lot of volume, then obviously it shows a need for it. If a box isn't being utilized, it's just like any other business. You may want to focus your resources somewhere else. But we're not using them because of this reason. We've been told not to use them because of this. So it's a... You know, please don't remove them until you get. Well, like I said, that is, I don't have anything to do with removing collection boxes. That's a postal service, and they have a, a strict wow. policy that they follow. As of right now, we are modifying every single box on the street. There's 850 collection boxes. We still have there. some of 10460 that are not modified. Correct. That's why I just said that we have, by the end of March, we anticipated having all of them completed. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I don't know if you came last time when I made on that. Address. No. Um, last November, at my job, 104652, um, I work at Bronze Lebanon Hospital, there was a mailbox in front there. And I witnessed three times how these guys are fishing the mail. They covered the rep card, three of them. And what I did was I called the 44 precinct, like you said, yeah, police enforcement is going to have to. I don't think they are, because when I call the 44 precinct and I speak to, to the Officer on duty. They said they don't do those kind of jobs. You have to speak to the inspector, please, to do that kind of job. And I was very annoyed with them. I said, listen, you could call these guys right away. They are there right now. As I'm speaking on the phone, I'm in the building, I'm seeing what they're doing. I see how they're fishing, and they refuse to come. Now, you said that the police officer mm -hmm. uh, That's right. this. They're not going to come. And this is very important because I like to know why you say that and why it's not addressed. I'm, I'm sure the commanding officer can address that, and I'm sure that's not the uh, you know, sure. It's yeah. not a high <laughs> level. That's, that's an exception. I don't think anyone in a 4 9 precinct would do that. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised to even hear something like that. Uh, no, I know. In, in a 4 4. I'm surprised that someone would say that to you over the phone. Uh, I can speak to the commanding officer in a 4 4. <laughs> I can assure you that. I can't imagine an officer saying something like that, but we'll look into it. Yeah, and from my experience with, the, I've pretty much worked with all the precincts in the Bronx, and from my experience with the 44 precinct, they're very proactive again. As a matter of fact, we've been on numerous surveillances with them, as well as the 49 and five, numerous uh, precincts throughout the Bronx, and particularly the 44. So I know they do have anti crimes that actually go out there and investigate these. So I'm very shocked to hear that. Well, I think we need to address that. Well, that's not my like said, I don't, I'm not responsible for the NYPD, so I'm sure the commanding officer will address it. Great. So I, I think we'll turn it over to the commander. Um, Rabbi? No, 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 let's stay, let's stay with you. I didn't see it. The only hand I just saw now was the rabbi. Does anybody else have any questions? Rabbi, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I hear what you're saying, Inspector, that by the end of March, everything gets replaced. But I think uh, the captain and I think almost everybody in this room realizes that this fishing was a very big business, a criminal business, and a criminal might think of another way how mm -hmm. to conduct this business even after March. Mm -hmm. Actually, I guess my question to you now, 
We heard about the key. The key is going to find nothing to worry about. So, so, I guess, let me phrase the question this way. Would you say at the end of March, it would be safe to put your mail in the box after the last collection? I would. And just like any other proactive preventative measure, like I, I used the analogy before, you may live in a safe neighborhood, you're still going to leave the keys in your ignition to your car. You always can try to take a preventative step if possible. Now, obviously, the boxes can be secure, but like you, to your point, these, these, these are very lucrative crimes that these the criminals are committing. So we want to eliminate the possibility for them to steal. So we don't want to give them any option. Yeah, they're going to try to still get into the modified boxes. They absolutely will. They're, they're very persistent. They have nothing else to do. This is their life to steal from, from, from Cutsco. It's just, it's responsible on the community to go out there and do whatever you can to protect yourself, protect your mail, protect your identity, protect your accounts. So, no, I would not recommend, even after all the boxes are done, to deposit after the last collection time. It's, it's, it's a matter of just changing our, our mentality as far as when we're going to put mail in the box. And it's a common sense approach to it, because if it's not there, it can't be sold. So, if, if everyone gets into it, protect it like you would protect any other property that you have. And that's what we're trying to get to the, the community. Okay, this is probably a sad commentary on the Times. <laughs> Very sad commentary. So you tell me there's no way, like, to even put an alarm system in this box if they tamper with it mm -hmm. back into the precinct, and we know that wherever, William Bridge Road, so how about his office? Yeah. The biggest problem we have with that is obviously there's 850 boxes in the Bronx, throughout the Bronx, and such technology is, of course, prohibitive to try to implement these boxes. Have you yet tried? Is this only a Bronx problem? No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, as we're, as we're fortifying the Bronx, we're seeing this spread to different areas. And, and we knew that was going to happen because they're going to go to the point of least resistance. So the complaints in the Bronx have plummeted since we've initiated this project. But they've also gone up in different areas. So it's common sense that if they're going to go to like water flowing down a, a, a river's bed. It's going to take the point of least resistance. They know it's difficult to fish in the Bronx. They're going to go somewhere else. But they're not going to stop. These, these people are very, very persistent, and that's why we try to build up the bigger cases, and we try to take them to federal prosecution. We try to uh, address the orchestrators of the crime. We try to disrupt the criminal activity. Not arrest the low-level offenders, because they're going to go out and do it again. But if we can get federal prosecution and get that sort of serious federal jail time, that's, the, that's what has an effect out there. But in the same hand, you can't arrest your way out of it. We, we all have to be pre uh, pre use prevention efforts, and we all have to be vigilant in protecting our property. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. Yeah. Okay, you're standing there and telling us that even though we have the new boxes, we should change our way of living and walk to the post office. No. Wait, that's what I heard you say. All right, at any rate, if you take senior citizens like I am, mm -hmm. very senior citizens, mm -hmm. it's a hardship for us to walk to the post right. office. Absolutely. Yeah, so what is the sense of putting in a new mailbox, which we have on the corner of Holland and Lydic, mm -hmm. and as far as I could see, I could put one envelope in at a time, so you can't go fishing, to put in new boxes if we can't use them? I'm not saying you can't do what I said, though, to take the extra step and to protect uh -huh. yourself is the mail prior to that last collection time. That's what I stressed. Yeah. I heard you say yeah. that, but I also heard you say we could change our ways and go to the post office with our mail to be safe. Absolutely. And your I information, I have walked to the post office, I have put my bills in there, and they never got to where they're going. Okay. <laughs> like I said, there's always going to be exceptions to everything, but like I said, if you put in there during the day before your last collection time, I believe that it's boxes is as pure as we could possibly get it. Postal Service invested a lot of money in That's modifying right. these boxes. Right. So they, 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 they took a tremendous amount of effort to try to protect your mail out there. So, yeah, you could use the box, but I'm just saying, take that extra step if you can. Obviously, not everybody, especially like you said, the elder communities can't get to the post office. But use the box, but just mail before that last collection time. That's all we're saying. Hey, Don Channel. I'm under the impression that uh, the mail carriers who deliver the mail, if you give them a letter, are supposed to take it back to the mail, mm -hmm. to the post Correct. Office. That's the procedures, and uh, the Postal Service can verify that. But yeah, the procedures, they take it, and they're supposed to entrust in that mail and get it into the processing. Is there any way to, for large apartment buildings, you know, everybody's got a mailbox, to have a separate mailbox 
you can put stuff in in the apartment building. Well, I know a lot of the panel no. boxes do have a separate area for collection mail in there. They usually have one dedicated slot for collection mail. So I know a lot of the apartments do have that. Not in my building. Okay, not everyone's no, going to have but it. This, I know but a lot I mean, of them. You know, I'm sure a lot of these buildings wouldn't mind, you know, spending 50 100 200 dollars whatever it is. No, no. Put in a secure no. box, actually, by the mailboxes and have the mail carrier who's ever yeah. dropping it off actually pick it up and take it back. Mm -mm. The trouble is there is that how do you access the box, how do you get the keys for that particular box? The only one's going to have the key is going to be, it's going to be the same lock as you have to open up the right rest now. of it. Right. Well, the postal take service, the like I said, they, that, that would be a collection box, and that's what the mm -hmm. postal service offers on, on delivery locations. Like I said, they're the ones that have determined where the boxes go, where, where the volumes are, and that's all on you know, the postal service. Then. We investigate the crimes, but they, they're, they're the ones who are delivery collections. That's all the policy says. Okay, but I mean, they might want to think about doing something like that. Okay, so, um, all right, before we move on to the professional man. Thank you very much for your information, and it was helpful, believe it or not. Okay? And there's now, flyers up front as well, if anyone needs to. Thank, thank you very much. Have a good day. Now, the branch uh, reps, could you come up, please? I figure all of you. So one, one suggestion I got, and I think pretty much all of us are going to have the same complaint for 10469, for 67, and everything else. I mean, if you have, uh, if it's the same. Uh, well, one of them is the fillings. That's going to be a, That's going to probably be a problem for all four of them. So I mean, rather than say it four times. Maybe if one person addresses it and then says it probably, it would apply to all of you, I believe. That would, you know, get us to get more information, other questions in, okay? And for the record, let me say this. The town of Greenberg, one month ago, the town of Greenberg, what we complained for down here is happening up there too. So it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a national problem. Okay, let's uh, open up. Uh, could you identify uh, what zip code you're on? Okay, um, good evening everyone. My name is Jeannie Martinez, and I'm a manager of customer service operations. I'm an area manager, and I cover a total of nine zip codes. The zip codes that I cover is 10455, 10459, 10463, 10464, 10467, 10468, 10469, 10473, 10474. With me, I have representing 10469, the manager of Baychester Station, Ms. Woodrow. I also have to my left, Ms. Stephanie Santos, the manager of Williamsbridge Station, 10467. And to the right of me, I have a newly promoted supervisor, Ms. Romara Tuggles, uh -oh, representing yet. Parkchester <laughs> Station, 10462. Um, I will speak on some of the issues that were coming about that we heard so far. Um, one of the questions or issues that arise was in 10460, and you were talking about them leaving the packages outside unattended. Now, we express to our carriers that that is not the SOP or the standard operating procedure to just leave packages unattended, even though some packages do say leave if no answer from Amazon or certain companies but we know that it's not safe. We may think it's safe in certain locations where they can leave it, maybe in between a vestibule, if they can get into the first store and leave it in between in an apartment building, if it's deemed safe, but for the most part, we tell them not to do that. We do have a lot of new hires that we just hired, and they're in the course of training. Um, the attrition rate in the post office has gone up very high, very rapidly, and we have a large turnover. Um, the new employees that we're getting, we are now investing more funds into getting them properly trained and their period of training has now been extended because we, we were getting too many complaints. Um, another issue that we were having was um, employee availability. As a result of employee availability, there's a lot of unfamiliar carriers on routes. So since there is a lot of unfamiliar carriers on routes, that's why I think one of the constituents said that there's always someone different. And that's due to the employability, which we are addressing as a whole in the Bronx. Um, so in reference to that, I'm gonna take that back with me. I'm gonna speak to the manager of West Farms, which is 10460, Ms. McCoy, and I will let her know your concerns. 
And um, if you can give me your address, okay, so at least we know what route it's on. But I'm sure they will have a service talk with the drivers to let them know, because you're saying it's the drivers, it's not the foot carriers, correct? Right? So we will have a service talk with those drivers and let them know, again, you must ensure that you ring the bells. If no one's home, leave a notice, bring it back. Because at least you know for sure it'll be in the post office when you come to pick it up. Oh, this, this morning, my neighbor, who's infirm like me, hobbled down her stairs and because she couldn't catch him, and she took it, to her, dragged it to her house. Okay. Well, we don't want that to happen. So I apologize on behalf of the Postal Service because that's not the customer service that we want to provide. Um, Ma'am, um, Bernadette? Yes. I believe you said you had an issue in 60. What was your issue? Was was really just about the uh, the mailboxes. Oh, the mailboxes. Yeah. So basically, um, in regards to the mailboxes, and I know there were some concerns about them taking them away. At one point, they were being taken away, but that was because they were um, changing them to the new modified boxes. So some boxes were taken from their locations for about a day or two, and then new boxes were inputted with the modifications. Again, this was also done for the protection of the public so that there is no more fishing. Um, is there, was there another concern that is the delivery? Okay, um, in reference to the delivery, like I explained, with all the new hires that we have, we are vigorously training them and we are trying to ensure that they're doing the right thing. We have supervisors going out and walking with them and observing them and we're in the street. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or complaints, you can. You have two methods that you can, three methods that you can do it. You can go online at usbs.com and you can file an ECC complaint online, which will go directly to a, um, a telecommunication center and then will be filtered down to that zip code. At that zip code, someone from the actual station will respond usually within 24 hours to let you know that they got that first contact, they're making the first contact with you, they're aware of the situation, they're going to investigate and follow up with you. Um, you can also do it on the phone as well. You can't get nobody on the phone. Okay, you, you tried the phone. You can't. <laughs> but definitely online, or if you call, not the not calling the branch itself, calling the 1-800 number for the ECC complaint. But you can also call the branch itself and speak to the supervisor or the manager as well, or write a letter, and they will address it as well. But I will be taking back um, all this information with me, and I will share it with the district, I will share it with the leadership of the Bronx, and we will gladly address it. Okay, so let's do Marcy, Keith, Edith, and Andrea. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. whenever you're ready, you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Don't know if it was Miss Tuggles I was on the phone with, but there was a supervisor. The phone works very well for me. It's In like, Parkchester? Parkchester, okay. yes. Started a couple, yeah, uh, it took me six hours to get someone on the phone. Wow. Six hours from 10 in the morning till four in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So when the lady picked up the phone, I was already ranting. I just went off my mail and everyone on lighting, pretty much everyone, we get each other's mail. I get other people's health insurance bills, they get mine. It's very serious. Checks. My house, we have, it's mixed dwelling, so I have a lawyer in there, and he's a bankruptcy lawyer. So we're getting people's credit cards, and if we don't get the mail by a certain time, sometimes he can't get them to bankruptcy court the next day and help them. So it's very important that we get the mail at a certain time every day before 6.30, before 7 o'clock, before we shut the outside door. We try to keep the door open as long as we possibly can. But then, you know, I want my safety and my privacy as well when I get home. So everyone alighting, we're delivering each other's mail to each other. I know you have an employee issue. Please ramp them up. They've got to be able to read the names and know who's in these houses. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm born in that house, so there's no way that they could mistake, you know, my name. Um, the other thing is, um, Let's see, uh, the mail has been left on the floor several times. We had a, a box left on the outside. I think I had come down, it was, uh, one night was 6.30, one night was 7, 10 p.m. Came downstairs only to find that after I shut the door at 7 p.m., 
that box was left on the stoop. It was a box with ice. I don't know what the lawyer was eating something fresh. I don't know what he was doing. But they delivered it at seven, purple carrot, I think, something like that. But it was left after 7 p.m. Um, and yeah, please, different postal people every day. It, it's of concern that they don't know the route. Okay, I can speak to that. Um, we now have a new initiative in the district for the New York <coughs> district, and that's for Manhattan and the Bronx, where we have a goal of getting all our carriers and drivers off the street by 7 p.m. Um, the, the, um, it's been in the past where the carriers were out late. You still may see them delivering after 7, but for the majority of the Bronx, we are back by 7 p.m., all mail delivered. We do have a contract with Amazon Fresh. Amazon Fresh delivers groceries, fresh groceries to your door. And they have deliveries up until 10 p.m. And they are scheduled that way. They have specific time frames where they have to deliver. They start from 4 in the morning and it ends at 10 p.m. at night. So it's a possibility that that tote that you saw on the floor was Amazon Fresh. I'm not sure. But it's something that we will look into. And uh -oh. um, I'm not um, sorry. Yeah, go proceed. Okay. It's, a, it's being addressed, the issue. Okay. Um, but for the most part, for the most part, um, it's our initiative that we are trying to um, reduce the amount of late carriers because it's for their safety as well. And because we want to provide a better service to the customers. Was never aware that our mail has ever been delivered past three in the afternoon until the last few years because we had to still walk the route. Mm -hmm. It's always delivered at 10 every morning, all the years. Yeah. What happens as well is um, with the growth on the routes, they change the order of the delivery on the route. So the carrier must follow a certain route line of um, sequence of delivery. So it can happen that. Possibly your address was at the beginning of the route prior and now due to the changes in the growth and maybe changes to the route or maybe they took pieces of the route and put it together to make other routes because they eliminated some routes. They could have made it now at the end of the route, which is why it's coming later. But for the most part, we cannot guarantee a specific time delivery, but we make all efforts to ensure that all mail is delivered before 7 p.m. I, I have Keith and then or Pat, either one first, and then we'll jump back to you. So um, we're from East Chester Gardens, and that's 10469. Piggybacking about the, we know our carriers. We know them, we love them because they've been there, they, they've been in place for forever. But when you do have other carriers that come, the mail is delivered in all the different boxes. I, I, I can't understand why you can't read or you can't actually, you have to read. Have to read. If you can't read, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And if we need to re re put the names in the um, in the mailboxes, then we then address that. And then that will happen. The people will put their names back in or we can address it in each building and we can do that to save you a little bit of trouble. But at the same token, they have to know at least the letter, the number, mm -hmm. and the name. <clears throat> and again, once again, if they they um, delivering mail that's that doesn't belong there, it's all dumped on the floor. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't belong to them, they're not like the old school, you know, residents who would usually deliver the mail if it's not theirs. But nowadays, you have all kinds of people coming in, and you they, and we we just can't keep. Supporting them without them trying to do the right thing by themselves. Mark, I'm the manager. I'm the manager of Baychester, and I know that East Chester Garden. Are you part of the, the the one that we call the courtyard, the big courtyard area, or just the East Chester Garden? We go from Gun Hill and Burke. Burke. Okay. All right. So, uh, in regards to the Delivery, I can address that. I can give my carriers a service talk on that. Um, the same thing that she was talking about earlier, we do have a lot of new employees um, coming in. They are supposed to read the names and the apartment numbers. However, um, they're supposed to deliver by apartment number if 
the apartment, if the name and the apartment number doesn't match and it's the name, they're supposed to circle the apartment number and put the mail in the box and attempt it. If it comes out and that tenant no longer lives there, when the carrier comes back the next day, they're supposed to take, if you leave it out, they're supposed to take it back to the station. That's an indication that that customer no longer lives there and they're supposed to circle the apartment number. That's the indication that they've already attempted it. And when they bring it back to us to check in the it's evening, that lets us know they attempted it the first day, the second day it's coming back and we know now we have to find out did this customer move, we can check for change of address, forward it, if it's a forward, if the regular is not there. So that's an indication. If you see anything that has a circled apartment number, that means we're attempting it because we're unsure if that person lives there. Maybe the name is not there, but the apartment number is correct. But well, we do that also because okay. when in, in our building, in 1260 Burke, mm -hmm. we make sure that if there's someone that doesn't live there any longer, we put, please return to sender, no longer lives here. We do help do those things. Okay. But we just want, you know, the to be well, that we can address um, in all the stations. We can do a, a service talk to our employees, make sure that you match the name with the apartment number, make sure you follow in the apartment number SOP, and you circle the apartment number, and make sure that if the mail comes back the next day, then we have to either return it to sender, or we leave what we call a 1571, that's a, uh, where an unfamiliar carrier leaves the note, leaves a message, if you will, for his regular to check the mail and see if that customer lives there if they're unfamiliar, so that way that the mail gets, you know, distributed mm -hmm. properly. I just want to add to that. Back. Let me just add to that. Um, as far as the hygiene of the mailboxes, I'm, I'm glad that you know that you said that. Um, one of the main issues that we have for the carriers, especially new and unfamiliar carriers, is when there's no names written in the mailboxes. So it would help if. The um, the tenants or the residents ensure that their names are written inside the mailboxes very clearly, and that the apartment numbers are very clear on the mailboxes. I understand some places already do have that, and they're still mistakes. But it does help to try to bring down those misdelivery counts. Okay. Yeah. Keep. Come, we'll come back to you. Let's jump over here and then come back. Okay, let's make no mistake about this. The complaints that I have has nothing to do with our steady carrier because he's a wonderful person. He goes out of his way. We have a big building of 86 units. What zip code, please? 10462. Okay. And he does a fantastic job. My complaint is not even the old mail truck drivers, but the new ones. I get a pink slip in my mailbox that was an attempted delivery. No one rang the bell because I'm usually home all day long. I called the post office in Parkchester and I got a very nasty individual. You have to be on the phone for three hours to get through. And she tells me the mailman couldn't get into the building. I said, you think I'm stupid? He left the notice in my mailbox. How did he get in the building to put the notice in? That's number one. Number two is... When we have uh, an alternate mail person delivering mail, they're very careless and they're very reckless. Either they don't know how to read or they want, don't want to know how to read. I got a delivery two weeks ago of an envelope with $1,200 cash from Florida. It was for the building next door, but it was the same apartment number. And it was the, not the regular mailman, because they never would have done that. That's carelessness, and that's not caring. Or well, if you don't care, then you don't belong servicing the public. I agree. Um, in reference to the slip being left in your box, my question to you, um, was that package attempted that same day, or was it attempted the day before? Okay, so it is possible. Let me explain the scenario. Your, um, your letter carrier, your regular carrier, may have keys to get into your building. I don't know, do you have a key keeper in your building? You do have a key keeper. But for some reason, they probably could not get access into the building the prior day. So they scanned it, no access. They brought it back to the post office. When the regular carrier comes the next day, they left a slip for the regular carrier. That's how he put it in your box the next day. No, because I couldn't find my package. I didn't know where it was. 
I'm confused. So I'm confused too. Uh, no, I don't. It took me ten days to get that on okay. my individual package. Okay. Oh well, I'm just saying, and if a scenario like that happens, and they say they didn't have access, and you suddenly find the pink slip in your box the next day. It's because they probably did not have keys to get access into the building. In my building, there's in and out every few seconds. You can always get into the building. So I, I can't believe that. They just don't attempt to come ring the bell. And my apartment was on it, and so was the intercom number on it. They just don't care. They want to get done. And I understand that they work very hard. It's not an easy job. But, but it still there. doesn't excuse. Yeah, exactly. So, so I agree with you, and I apologize for that. But that's something we will address. Okay. Keith? Um, I would like to address customer service. The Baychester branch is one of the worst branches that I have ever been to in this particular area. Now, I don't know if you, ma'am, are the one that, that ran it um, a month ago. I know it was some guy. But what is, I had to constantly go there because of the lateness of the mail. Nobody should get mail at 7 or 8 o'clock in the night. No one. Now, I heard you say something about... Uh, you know, you got your super 7 book. 7 p.m. initiative. Yeah, no, and I also heard you say you have your supervisors following the carriers. Now, if they're following the carriers, that means they ain't doing what they're supposed to do. So, as far as I'm concerned, you must, there must be some type of way, because see, this is a federal agency. Mm -hmm. It's one really funny. I've complained several times about that. That that way that you say um, about the complaint, that don't work. Because when you call that 800 number, they file a complaint. But what is when it gets to the branch managers, they probably uh, shut it or, 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 or stop it some type of way. That I did it two times. I know for a fact. You tell me that your number is not 3798518. Is that your number? Okay. So I call that number. Okay. And what happens is the people don't pick up. That's so right. I don't know if it's like party all the time in the back. Or whatever's going on, but they don't pick up. Mm -hmm. And what happens? I have to call constantly. That man, uh, the 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 the, um, the, um, the branch, the guy that delivered my mail last week, came up to my house, gave me approximately thirty seconds to get to my door. When I ran downstairs and said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Listen, there's some device that y'all have that you want them in and out. So what is some type of device?" He said, "Look." They ain't my fault. They want me gone. I said, well, what? What was I supposed to do? Go back to the 